Welcome back, our heroes. After nine months in space, NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams have finally returned to Earth. The SpaceX capsule made a fast and fiery re-entry through Earth's atmosphere before four parachutes deployed, guiding them to a gentle splashdown off the coast of Florida. The return was so epic that even a pod of dolphins circled the craft. After a recovery ship lifted it from the water, the astronauts beamed and waved as they were helped out of the hatch, along with fellow crew members, astronaut Nick Haig and cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov. To be fair, astronauts Williams and Wilmore never imagined they'd spend nine months in orbit. Their mission to the International Space Station was supposed to be a quick eight-day journey in June 2024 aboard the Boeing Starliner spacecraft. But when technical issues with the spacecraft forced it to return to Earth without them, their stay in space stretched far beyond the original plan. Now, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to know that spending nearly a year in space could affect your health. But what exactly are those impacts? First, let's talk about the changes caused by microgravity. While floating around in zero gravity may seem like a lot of fun, staying in this environment for too long can have serious health effects. On Earth, our muscles and bones are always working to counteract gravity. But in a zero gravity environment, they don't have to. And over time, that constant convenience weakens their strength. In space, without gravity constantly pulling on their limbs, Sunni and Butch's muscle and bone mass quickly begins to decrease. The muscles most affected are those that help maintain posture, like those in the back, neck, calves, and quadriceps. In microgravity, these muscles don't have to work as hard, leading them to atrophy. After just two weeks, muscle mass can drop by as much as 20%, and over longer missions of three to six months, it can fall by up to 30%. Shenhav Shemer, a professor of biology at the Technion, Israel Institute of Technology, explained that the longer an astronaut spends in space, the more their muscles are likely to weaken over time. She also pointed out that women are generally more at risk for both muscle atrophy and bone loss, as they naturally have less muscle mass and testosterone. Additionally, hormonal changes in zero gravity could make them more susceptible, meaning Wilmore and Williams might experience these effects differently. There were rumours circulating for a while that Suni Williams was showing signs of weight loss, but she later cleared things up, confirming that she was healthy and not experiencing any issues. Similarly, without the mechanical strain gravity places on their bones, astronauts' bones start to demineralize and lose strength. They can lose 1-2% to of their bone mass every month, up to 10% over 6 months far more than the 0.5 to 1% loss per year experienced by older adults on Earth. This bone loss increases the risk of fractures and slows healing. It can take up to four years for astronauts' bone mass to fully return to normal once they're back on Earth. In addition, weight loss also partly comes from a diet lacking vitamins from fresh foods. To counteract these effects, astronauts commit to 2.5 hours of exercise and intense training every day while aboard the ISS. Their routine includes squats, deadlifts, rows, and bench presses in the station's gym, along with regular sessions on a treadmill and exercise bike. Wait, how can they lift weights in zero gravity? Engineers at NASA Johnson designed a special exercise device to help astronauts stick to a personalized workout plan in the microgravity environment of low Earth orbit. The Advanced Resistive Exercise Device AREd targets all the major muscle groups focusing on squats, deadlifts and calf raises to help astronauts maintain their strength and endurance. The AREd is a mechanically simple yet durable device. It uses vacuum cylinders to provide consistent resistance, while flywheel assemblies offer variable resistance. This variable resistance mimics the inertial forces astronauts would feel when lifting free weights on Earth. What makes it unique is that it doesn't rely on gravity to function, meaning it works just as well in space as it does on Earth. Unfortunately, a recent study revealed that even with this rigorous exercise regimen, astronauts still experience losses in muscle function and size. 
while higher resistance loads and high intensity interval training might help mitigate some of the muscle loss, these issues are not entirely resolved while astronauts remain in space. The absence of gravity pulling on their bodies can also cause astronauts to grow a little taller during their time on the ISS, as their spines elongate slightly. So it's good news for those with modest height. However, once back on Earth, this can lead to issues like back pain and slipped discs as their bodies readjust to gravity. Being in a zero-gravity environment also affects the astronaut's vision. Many return to Earth with vision issues due to spaceflight-associated neuroocular syndrome. While scientists are still researching the exact cause, one theory is that the lack of gravity disrupts fluid distribution in the body. On Earth, gravity helps push blood downward while the heart pumps it upward. In space, this process gets thrown off, causing blood to pool in the head more than usual. Some of this fluid can gather at the back of the eye and around the optic nerve, leading to swelling. This can cause vision changes like reduced sharpness and structural changes in the eye. These effects can start after just two weeks in space, with the risk increasing the longer astronauts stay. While some issues can persist for years, no astronaut has reported significant or permanent vision loss after a mission so far. In microgravity, the heart doesn't have to work as hard to pump blood against gravity, which can cause it to become slightly smaller and less efficient. This can lead to low blood pressure and dizziness when astronauts return to Earth. However, research suggests that these effects are temporary, and some studies indicate that astronauts often have better cardiovascular health than the general population once they're back on Earth. Space may lack gravity, but you know what it has plenty of? Cosmic radiation. On Earth, we're protected by the planet's magnetic field and atmosphere, which shield us from most of the particles that make up space radiation. Still, we're exposed to low levels of radiation every day from the food we eat to the air we breathe. In space, however, astronauts face higher and more varied levels of radiation. Three major sources contribute to this space radiation. Particles trapped in Earth's magnetic field, solar energetic particles from the sun, and galactic cosmic rays. A major challenge in reducing radiation risks is that some of these particles, particularly galactic cosmic rays, are hard to shield against. Prolonged exposure to increased radiation can lead to both short and long-term health issues, depending on the total amount of radiation astronauts encounter and how long they're exposed. During their first six months in space, Suni and Butch are exposed to an average of 80 to 160 millisieverts of radiation. Millisieverts are the units used to measure how much radiation the body has absorbed. To put it into perspective, although the type of radiation differs, one millisievert of space radiation is roughly equivalent to receiving three chest X-rays. While the International Space Station is partially shielded by Earth's magnetosphere, prolonged exposure to higher levels of radiation than on Earth could increase their risk of cancer over time. Fortunately, not all radiation is harmful. Scott Kelly, who participated in a nearly year-long experiment on the space station, returned with surprising results. One of the most significant discoveries from Kelly's extended journey in space was the impact it had on his DNA, particularly on the structures known as telomeres. Telomeres are repetitive sequences at the ends of chromosomes that play a crucial role in maintaining genomic integrity. They protect the DNA from degradation and prevent it from triggering harmful DNA damage responses. Every time our cells divide, these telomeres get a bit shorter which happens as we age. But it's not just age. Things like stress, pollution, and even radiation can speed up the shortening of telomeres. During his spaceflight from flight day 14 to flight day 334, it was observed that the length of his telomeres increased by 14.5%. The effect was quickly reversed upon his return to Earth, with telomere length ultimately returning to near pre-flight levels after six months. Initially, he believed the changes were due to the moderate exercise and highly controlled diet he followed while on the ISS. However, NASA later discovered that the Japanese were conducting similar experiments on worms, and their telomeres were also improving. 
Upon further investigation, they realized that radiation was responsible for these positive changes. And then there's the psychological aspect. Being isolated in a closed environment for an extended period would typically drive a normal person crazy. NASA states that crews selected for ISS missions are carefully chosen and trained to ensure they can handle missions lasting six months or longer. However, research has shown that this type of environment, whether in space or not, can lead to behavioral changes and cause fatigue, stress, and sleep loss. Well, it's not like they're always suffocating on the space station. Once in a while, they'll do a spacewalk mission to inspect and maintain the station, giving them a chance to get out a little bit. Additionally, every time we connect with these astronauts, they continue to respond with a comfortable and positive attitude. Extended stays in space can do more harm than good to your health. Fortunately, most people can recover after spending some time back on Earth. If you had the chance, how long would you want to spend on the International Space Station? Let me know in the comments. Even after Sunni and Butch returned home and were finally able to breathe Earth's air, they still wouldn't feel comfortable. They will feel heavy, as their vestibular system will still be recovering, throwing off their balance. They will often experience the sensation of spinning, and moving their head too quickly will be disorienting and painful. The sudden shift of fluid in their inner ear will make it feel as though they turn their head much faster than they actually do. Additionally, the muscles in their neck, which on Earth support the head all day, will be weakened, making it easy to strain their neck by turning too quickly. They may also experience dizziness due to orthostatic hypertension. They will have the strength to walk, but it will require more concentration since their bodies won't have been sending those neural commands in the same way recently. When we walk, we essentially lean forward, begin to fall, and use our legs to stabilize. Newly returned astronauts will have to consciously think about their gait. They may also tire easily, as they will be asking their heart to work harder than it has in a while. Thankfully, this will be less of an issue than it once was, as astronauts will now follow intense exercise regimens while in space. Recovery rates will vary among astronauts. Typically, dizziness and balance issues will resolve within a week and the heart rate will return to normal in three to four weeks. Both Sunni and Butch are in their 60s, so recovery will take time. But on the plus side, they are both experienced astronauts and resilient people, so I think they will be fine. This is my new channel, and I need your help to reach 1,111 subscribers. So hit subscribe now and get ready for an out-of-this-world adventure. You won't be disappointed.